Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts today, for this is another day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I share a special Happy Mother's Day for those of you who are active mothers, and that means that you may be um, not always a biological mom, but that may mean that you are still mothering, that you are still loving and caring and supporting and encouraging those around you, all those beautiful gifts of motherhood. And that's what we celebrate today. We celebrate not just that biological act, but we celebrate those values and those characteristics today of making a wonderful mother. So it is good to be here today. It is also the seventh Sunday of the season of Easter. Believe it or not, we have been celebrating the resurrection of Jesus now for seven weeks. Um, a fitting time for us to remember. We also bring to conclusion today our sermon series on emerging from the chrysalis and the cocoons of our life. And today we remember about what it means to take that step and actually embrace the newness of life, inviting others around us to help open those chrysalises and taking the role of the community to open those around us. So I'm glad that you can be here and worship today. As we move through the service, please pay attention to some of these special things that are going on. Um, remember our worship schedule. Next week we'll be at First Presbyterian Church um, for the remainder of this month. This Thursday we have our next session of Bible journaling. So if you haven't tried that yet, or you were there last time, you already know you want to come back. Um, that will be in the parking lot, just off the parking lot in the library at First Presbyterian Church. Um, come at 6 p.m. and just be prepared to have God's Word opened up in a little bit different way, as well as just feeding your soul with community, with laughter, with encouragement and support. And then on Sunday... It is Pentecost Sunday, so um, we um, encourage you all to wear red. Red is the color of Pentecost, um, and we're also allowing you to um, be a little bit garish in your dress, a little bit outlandish in your dress. Um, so if you can come from head to toe in red, that will be fun for all of us to see as we participate in that. We have the Memorial Day Parade at the end of the month where you picked up your bulletins. There's a clipboard there that you can sign up if you'd like to help. We have um, popcorn that we know we're going to need to put into individual bags and staple just a little welcome um, or just a little notes about the church to that. Um, we're also looking for donations of bottles of water. Um, so if you are out and about in the next couple weeks and there's some cases of water on sale at some of the grocery stores, go ahead and pick up um, one or two of those. And then finally, it's just a great place to watch the parade. Um, comes right past um, First Presbyterian on 8th Street there, so you can come and bring your chairs or your towel, whatever makes you comfortable, um, and just enjoy a beautiful day with friends, um, with your faith community, and to remember what Memorial Day is all about. So one other thing that it's not in our announcement list, but that I want to share with you um, to celebrate. So we know that um, about two and a half years ago, um, we had a dream here that grew out of our council night that we needed to do something um, about addressing homelessness in the community. So we started what is now the Manquoc Warming Shelter. It is obviously a ministry that is bigger than just us, a whole community thing. Well, some wonderful things have been happening about that, and I'm excited to tell you that we are, our offer has been accepted um, on a permanent location for the warming shelter that would also include um, transitional apartments. Um, and that is the old McKinley School on 1010 Huron Street. Um, now, the offer has been accepted, but there's two contingencies with the offer, um, which means that even though they've accepted it, we have, to have, we have two other conditions that have to be met. 
One is, is we have to have the conditional use permit um, approved by the city. All that paperwork and application was turned in Friday. Um, the plan commission will have a public hearing for that at City Hall on the 22nd of May, and then they will recommend that to the city council um, where they will take that up at their June 17th meeting and it will have another public hearing. Um, that's for anybody in the community who wants to express an opinion about it, um, particularly those, I believe it's at within a mile and a half um, of the school get mailed a specific packet of information um, so those homeowners have, um, um, can celebrate it. I, I'm always gonna say the positive word. So, so those homeowners can celebrate that a more or less abandoned building now can be brought back to life. Um, and help bring um, good things back to their community. But to that end, if you would like to learn more about the whole project, at 10 a.m. on Saturday, you can meet there at the building in the parking lot. We will eventually go into the building, um, but we need to gather first and all come in at one time and not just because the building is, is not safe for everyone to just wander freely through it. Um, so we'll gather in the parking lot at 10 a.m. So if you have more questions, you want to learn more about that, um, come and um, to do that and to learn a little bit about it. So we're, we're excited. Um, so how are we doing this? Um, you know, I'll just answer one question that often sits, you know, how can we afford to do that? Well, right now, the, the, um, the other contingency on the approval of the sale is that we have um, a million and a half dollars in hand which allows us to purchase the property um, as well as get a little bit into the remodeling, um, be able to purchase insurance and, and all of that kind of stuff. And we um, have met with a donor this week and um, believe that they are ready to transfer um, as much as two and a half million dollars um, towards this project. So, so there's been a lot of things, amen, right? <laughs> That have, been, that, that have been happening behind the scenes that I've been waiting to try, you know, to share with you, but we had to reach a certain point. So, um, so we can all say hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. Amen to that. So let's continue to worship the Lord. Steve? I invite us all to stand as we are able and to join together in this responsive litany celebrating mothers and all women. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for mothers, for all they mean or have meant to us. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the qualities of mothers, for their patience, their kindness, concern, and understanding. We thank you for the part they play in our lives, for this special day of saying thank you. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the wonder of your mothering. As a mother protects her children, you watch over us day by day. We thank you for your arms, which always encircle and protect us. Your hands shield us and deliver us from harm. Loving God, we pray for those for whom Mother's Day brings heartache rather than a celebration. We pray for those who have never known their mother or whose mothers have died. We thank you for your mothering heart and your tender love, which nurtures all who feel abandoned and lost. We wait with those who long to be mothers but as yet have not had their own children. 
We grieve with those who ache because they will never be mothers. We thank you for their mothering heart which is not long in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all of us with your We pray for those who struggle with the way their children have chosen to live their lives and grieve with those who are orphaned or have a difficult relationship with their mother. We thank you that when we long for a mother and father, you do not abandon us. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. May all of us have the comfort of knowing that your mothering love is constant, your understanding is perfect, and your compassion is never-ending. We thank you that you gave birth to all of us with the light and joy. Lord, in your mercy, mother of us all in your love. Amen. Let us sing God of the Living. In unison, let us pray together. Holy One, we gather today to dream of a more just and equitable world. We cannot fully live into our potential as free beings or even secure our basic human needs if we do not abolish the systems of injustice and violence that plague our social relations and our economies. We know that there will be times when we stumble or stutter in our work to create a more equitable world. We pray for your grace to cover our faltering flutters and for your joy to give us the confidence we need to boldly overturn the status quo. 
Help us share this joy with others and sustain us for the work ahead. Amen. Friends, we know that we have been claimed in these waters of baptism. We have been made new creations. So let us now greet one another, not as the old self, but as the new self. Lives of joy and of hope and of love. May this Christ spirit, the love of Christ spirit, be with us all. Go ahead and greet one another. I think we can invite the young people to come up front, and uh, Brittany's got some fun things to share with us today. There we go. Ooh, you're nice and hot today. Thank you. Oh, good morning, my friends. Good morning. We got Spider-Man up here. We got all sorts of fun stuff. We need Butterfly Man or Person. It's a very special day today, isn't it? It's Mother's Day. And I was thinking, when I was getting our craft set up, I realized something that I didn't even notice the other day. The other day, we made butterflies, and they were really cool. We made them out of our hands. Mm -hmm. You remember that? We made them out of the tops of our hands, and they represented us on the bottom. And then we had little bottles, wings. And we had talked about all those people that helped lift us up. And you know who is in the bottom of every single butterfly? Who helped lift every single one of us up? Yeah, I didn't even notice it on that day, but every single one of us talked about moms. Moms do so much for us. I'm like, we don't even have the time to list them all. Like, they help us sit up and roll over and stand up and walk and talk and feed ourselves and dress us. They teach us manners and they share with others and they give us food and clothes and medicine and toys and most important of us all, like they give us hugs when we need them. That's exhausting, Liz. Yeah. That's pretty special. I think so too. Moms also do a, another really important job. They teach us to follow Christ. Oh, I got a good gasp. 
If you're here this morning, or you're watching us, that means that you have parents that take God's commands really seriously, and they know that you are supposed to love each other. And more than anything, they want you to become people who love God and others so that one day you can teach others to do the same. And moms do all of this. They call it a really tough job, but they do it without collecting a paycheck, right? Like no one's like, Shh, you get a raise today. Be silly. They rarely get any time off. And when they do get a moment for themselves, you're never really far from their mind. They do it because they don't, even though they don't get anything in return, they get love in return. And God wants us to love them in return. There's a really beautiful story that's actually in the Old Testament we're going to hear today, as, long, as well as some other moms, too. I'm going to sit down and listen to the story. Oh, okay. you're going to miss it today. We're going to talk. We're going to listen from, we're going to read from Ruth today in okay. Sunday school. Oh. Yep. Cool. Ruth's a pretty cool person. And Ruth set a really great example for us to follow. And they taught us all. It's okay. It's okay. We all listen differently. They taught us about how there's all different types of moms. Mothers and stepmoms and mother figures and mother-in-laws and adopted moms and foster moms and grandmas and big sisters and so many more. And like we've been talking for the last couple of weeks, Becoming a mom includes those hard changes, like lots of hard changes. Do you want to say a special prayer just for moms? Yeah, yeah let's right, do right. that. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for our moms. Thank you for our moms. Thank you for those who love us. Thank you for those who love us. Thank you for teaching them to love. Thank you for teaching them to love. And helping them. And helping them. Teach us to fly. And teach us to fly. Amen. Amen. Yeah, teach us how to fly. It's a little bit different kind of fly. Okay, we'll see you at the end of service. Okay. Just follow Mix Brittany. Please be in a spirit of prayer with me. O risen Christ, open us all up to the power of your resurrection as we hear it proclaimed anew this day, that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. Today, we remember that we are called to live a new life in the resurrected Christ as we listen to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. After a few days, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and people heard that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer space, not even near the door. Jesus was speaking the word to them. Some people arrived, and four of them were bringing to him a man who was paralyzed. They couldn't carry him through the crowd, so they tore off part of the roof above where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Our story of love, Christ has risen. Christ has risen in me. Amen. So by the year 2000, Judge John Phillips 
had long since lost count of the number of minors he had sent through the California penitentiary system for crimes committed during a violent and hopeless adolescence. He made the remark on at least one occasion that you send these young people to prison and there they learn to become harder criminals. He wasn't happy with this. He wanted to find some better solution. So in 2003, he set out to find that better way, to create that better way, to somehow get kids in an environment of support where they could pass through these difficult years with a hand on their shoulders to help guide them. Philip started Rancho Silo in the town of Salinas. Ironically, it was set up in an old juvenile detention center. Now, every year since then, about 220 students have attended Rancho Silo, where some, while some didn't make it, they have an 84.8% of first-time offenders who enroll and never re-offend again. 84.8% of young people actually getting the ability to take control of their own lives instead of having a life forced on them. Now, in case you're wondering, those who go to juvie, those who go to the normal criminal system, have a 40% recidivism rate, which means that, they, that a large number of these folks just repeat. And they, they get out, they reoffend, they get in, and that, that becomes their life cycle, not just for a few years while they're teenagers, but for an entire lifetime. But there at the rancho, they get tutoring, they're exposed to different types of diversity. They're experiencing how to actually live with another person, how to be kind, as well as, of course, normal academic studies. The cost to do this is $25,000 per student. It's not cheap. Do you know how much it costs to house that same person in prison? $110,000. It's a good investment in our communities. It's a good investment in our culture for places like this to exist. What Judge Phillips did is he made it possible for their lives to be changed. He helped open, if you will, that chrysalis that had been built around them, some of that of their own building, but even more of it forced onto them by culture, by labeling and telling them that you're no good, this is all we can ever expect out of you. And then once you're labeled, you're treated, and once you're treated a certain way, it's hard to ever become anything else. But he helped open up that prison of the chrysalis. He opened it up for young people to be able to spread their wings and be able to become the person that Christ created them to be. He gave them a hope and a vision so that they could fly to new heights that their old life would have told them was impossible. He gave them a second chance. Now, our story this week that Steve read to us is another story of a life that seems to have been forced upon somebody opening up. There is this man who believes that he is trapped in this chrysalis where culture has told him, because you're paralyzed, you're not really anything. Because you're paralyzed, you can't really do anything. You can't really be anybody. Now, they weren't quite as enlightened as we at least pretend to be today. But he was in this chrysalis. He had been placed in a box, and that was all he was ever going to be. 
But then there were some people around him. Now, I'm going to take a little poll. How many of you assume that these, that the people who brought this man to Jesus were his friends? Is that what you kind of assume? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we've always been taught. But the text doesn't actually say that they were his friends. And I think that becomes important because sometimes we only want our friends to do certain things and we don't want our community to help us in different ways. But no, the text tells us that these were people around him. Sure, they could have been friends. Maybe they were just people he kind of knew from the synagogue. Maybe they were just people who lived around his house. Maybe they were people that knew brothers or sisters or parents. The point is, is that they cared enough. They had heard the stories about this Jesus. And even though it's only the second chapter here in Mark, I mean, in the first chapter, we already have Jesus doing some healings and some other miracles. They heard about Jesus, and they said, this man needs to be set free. Now again, I want to reiterate, it wasn't so much that he was paralyzed. There was a certain cultural piece about that. But I think this man needed to be set free from the belief that he couldn't be anything else. And so they worked. They brought him to Jesus, and when they saw that it was too busy, they took him up on the roof, and they dug a hole, and they dropped him down through the roof so he could have an audience with Jesus. It's hard to imagine, but remember, just so you can remember that, the roofs in those days weren't exactly like they are today. It was a little bit easier to get there, but it was nonetheless intentional work that you did. And there, before Jesus, these friends began to open this chrysalis. And Jesus then opened it even more and told the man, you are a child of God. Rise, fly, be everything that God created you to be. And again, that was a change in this man's understanding to the culture around him. They couldn't believe in a miracle unless it was something physical. So the man also got up and walked. But I am convinced that even if that man didn't get up and walk, he would have still been healed. He would have still been transformed. He would have still been given wings to be what God needed him to be. God doesn't need us to be these physical creatures as much as God sets free our hearts and our minds to dream and to soar. I wonder what some of the conversations among that group who brought that man might have been like. The love that they had for what may have been a little bit of a stranger. But they were motivated. They had a vision of Jesus that opens cocoons and chrysalises and even tombs and says, come out, spread your wings, and fly. When a butterfly begins to emerge from the chrysalis for that first time, we talked last week about how it's scary, how it's a bit of an unknown, but that butterfly comes out, it sits there, it dries off, and it sits there waiting. It has two things on its mind, the scientists tell us. It's hungry, and it has to procreate. You know, butterflies in general have a pretty small life cycle. It's really only a few weeks. It's hard for us to tell because they all kind of look the same to us when they're fluttering around. But that butterfly at the end of the summer is not the same one 
that might emerge today. They have those things in their mind. They have to eat and they have to procreate. That's kind of what's in them. They have a very short amount of time to fly. The very reason they were given wings was so that they could travel in a path that they have never been on before, that they could go places that they could never go before, to travel a long enough distance to meet other butterflies, to find the flowers to nourish themselves. The monarch butterfly that many of you may like to raise has like a three-generation kind of life cycle. Like the third generation, no one quite understands it, but it lives much, much longer than a few weeks. That third generation one somehow lives a few months, and you might know that monarch butterflies travel thousands of miles that third generation returns to its homeland, if you will, to start the life cycle all over again. Caterpillars can't do that. Before they become transformed into butterflies, caterpillars can't move that far. They can't actually procreate. They're pretty far, or they're pretty much limited to a few feet in which they were created, they were hatched into a specific branch, maybe a piece of bark, maybe your windowsill. The butterfly can transverse continents at time. But that little caterpillar could never do that. It has to go inside of a cocoon has to break free. It has to become something more than a caterpillar. And then one day it knows it's no longer the caterpillar. It's no longer limited by all the things that define a caterpillar. The sky is literally the limit. The caterpillar was created to be transformed and fly. Even though it can't do those things, that's why it was created. The man in today's story was created to fly as a child of God, but he needed to be transformed just as a caterpillar needs to be transformed. In fact, all of us, friends, all of us were created to fly, even though we may find ourselves in the body of a caterpillar, even though we may find ourselves not moving very far or very fast, even though the world may tell us all you ever get to do is eat some leaves and creep upon that branch. We were made for much, much more than that. We were made to be transformed. We were made to be new creations. We were made for the Easter moment so that we could be more than just a bag of flesh and bone. We were created to be more than just a caterpillar. And how do we get there? How do we move from one place to another? Well, maybe, just maybe, it's going to be some good friends. Maybe it's going to be the community of faith that's sitting around you right now, even if you don't know them that well. Maybe it's going to be a group of neighbors around your house. Maybe it's going to be a group of people at work. Maybe it's going to be some strangers that you have yet to meet. But somehow, some way, they're going to bring you, they're going to pick up your mat, they're going to bring you, and they're going to help open your cocoon so you can become what you were created to be. No matter what. That is our destiny. We need a set of friends, a people, a community, to realize that we were meant to fly to daring new heights. We can't get there alone. 
People often say, oh, I'm a Christian, but I can do it on my own. That's great for them. I'm not that strong. I'm not that smart. I need to be in a community. I need to be in relationship with you because I need that strength. I need those friends. I need those people that are going to pick up my mat, are going to help me open the cocoon that is around me so I can become what God created me to be. And I believe that you too need that, that we need one another. In 1955, a new pastor came to town in Montgomery, Alabama to lead the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church and to raise his family. That's all he wanted to do. He had worked hard in school and now he had reached into this community that had an upwardly mobile African-American community and that's where he was going to serve and that's what he was going to do. He was building a nice little cocoon for him and his family. But there were other people there. There were other people there that had a different idea. The Montgomery bus boycott launched around the same time that Martin Luther King, 26-year-old, newly minted preacher, came to lead that church. He didn't really want to be involved. He didn't really want to do that much. But his colleagues, his congregants, they saw something more that this chrysalis he was building wasn't really what he was meant to be. They could see things that he didn't see himself. And they urged him and they pushed him and they elected him rather reluctantly on his part at least to the, the Montgomery Improvement Association. Rosa Parks was one of those people that pushed this new pastor because of his community. He was be able to fly to new heights because of that community, because they saw in him with the eyes of God, because they saw him not as a caterpillar but as a butterfly. He became MLK. He became the father of the civil rights movement. He became the heart and the voice, or as he would say, he became the drum major and the fight for justice. He thought he was just a caterpillar and that would be his life. But those around him knew more. Maybe some of you have read the works of C.S. Lewis, his early years were marked with much difficulty in life. His father was very demanding and often emotionally and physically distant. His mother died from cancer when he was just nine years old. He struggled physically and socially at boarding schools in England, even though he was born in Ireland. And then when World War I came, he was drafted and he saw the horrors of trench warfare. All of these things helped make him a devout atheist. And he went to teach at Oxford University and there there were these group of friends. They eventually called themselves the Knickerbockers. But they saw something in C.S. Lewis that he couldn't see in himself. He saw himself as a caterpillar just meant to go to that ancient institution and teach his classes and come home. But they saw in him something more wonderful. They saw not a caterpillar, but a butterfly. And they talked with him. And he opened up. And C.S. Lewis, the devout atheist, at one point his chrysalis is open and he welcomes Christ into his life and he dares to fly to new heights and he authors over 30 books 
somehow related to the Christian faith, many of which you have read. He wrote the great Nar um, uh, Chronicles of Narnia that opened up for children this whole understanding of, of, of a god and the person of the lion Aslan, about a god who was loving and caring as well as powerful. It took a community. It took others to see within him what he could not see in himself. It took a community to open up that chrysalis, to let his wings fly, open up so he could fly. Friends, I have to ask you today, are you willing to let this very community, are you, letting, are you willing to let this community of faith help you open your chrysalis. Are you willing to become vulnerable with one another? To lay our lives before one another and to find out that with the love, with the support, with the kindness, with the generosity, with the prayers, with the hope of this community, you may find that you have wings to do the things that you think you think are impossible. Are you ready to become the person that God created you to be? And are you willing to do it side by side with others who are seeking and striving and hoping to break free of the life that so many have forced us into? You are more than just a bag of flesh and bones. You are more than just a worker at such and such of a place. You are more than just a retired person. You are more than just a young person. You are more than just an old person. You are more than just somebody with cancer. You are more than just somebody who has physical limitations. You are more than somebody who just has dementia. You are more than all of that. You are a child of God. The Easter moment has set you free. The stone has been rolled away. The chrysalis is being broken open. You were created to be so much more than what you may think you are. This is the power of Easter. Friends, Christ has risen from the grave. Christ is alive. Christ has transformed your life. The community of faith is opening up cocoons and chrysalises in prison cells all over the world. This community, we invite you to fly. For you see, I believe that you and I are more than just caterpillars. I believe that Jesus Christ is alive. I believe that Jesus is alive and working in each and every one of you. I believe that together we can do the impossible because we are more than just humans. We are the children of God. I believe that we can build warming shelters and transitional housing. I believe that we can feed the hungry. I believe we can friend the unfriended. I believe that we can take the broken and lift them up. I believe that together we can transform this community. I believe that we can change the landscape. I believe it. And therefore, I'm willing to be a friend that helps carry your mat to the feet of Jesus and say, come. Here he is, here she is, here they are, Jesus. I believe that. And so we journey together as a community of faith. And there are still more. There are still more that are hungering and thirsting to join us. They may not even know it yet. Next week we're going to see six new people officially join the ministry of Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry. 
There are more that are thinking. There are more that are studying. Why? Because I believe, and I believe that you believe, that there is a reason for them to know Christ. I believe that you believe that there is more than just this moment in life. That together, we can break open the chrysalises of life and let each other soar. The prophet says to, to mount up on wings like eagles and soar through the sky. This is why Christ has risen from the grave, so that we may have wings and to soar on the winds of the gospel all over the world. Do you, do you believe this as well? Amen. If you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing I Danced in the Morning. Somebody asked the other day about if, 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 if Presbyterians or members of the UCC ever dance, and one of, one of our members responded, well, we dance sometimes, we even sing this song about dancing, so if you feel like you want to move a little bit, if you want to twirl around in the aisle and move in your seat, and to show that dancing in the new creation is not just in words. There you go, Fred, I saw that, Fred. Um, let us join in singing, I danced in the morning when the world began.
Friends, God has prepared a table of love for each of us. God has prepared this table and says, Come to me, all you who are weary, all you who are carrying heavy burdens, all you who feel stuck in the prison cells, all you who feel as if you're stuck in a chrysalis, come to me and I will help it open and I will let your wings unfurl so that you may soar and be all that I have created you to be. Jesus says, come. Therefore, siblings in Christ, this table, the sign and the seal of our forgiveness and life eternal is prepared for us, not because you deserve it, but because God loves you. It's as simple as that. You are worthy of love. You were created to soar. And like a butterfly who needs nectar, so we come to this table to be nourished, so we can move beyond these walls with the gospel of Christ and fly wherever we need to be. As we prepare to receive these gifts of bread and cup, I invite you to take the opportunity today to share offerings, whatever you may have. If you wish to give electronically, you can simply scan. Oh, you just move that. You're welcome to scan one of those QR codes, whether you're here or at home, and go to one of our online sites. Your offerings of prayers, your offerings of your financial resources, the gifts of your time are all necessary as we open the cocoons of a dying world and let new life flourish. When we come forward for communion, you are invited to come and to bring your offerings to the plate, which will get brought here that was moved for a funeral and is over there, but was not brought back here. Um, you'll have that opportunity to come and to leave your offerings in that plate. As we come to this time of prayer, are there any special prayers today that you wish to lift up? Yes, Gail. Okay, you said Kevin? Okay, prayers for Kevin who's having a stent put in one of his uh, vessel, uh, blood vessels to his brain. Prayers for that. Other prayers today? Some of you who um, have been in the community for a long time, particularly those who um, worship here as First Reformed Church, remember Art and Kathy Willie. Um, I share with you news with, with their permission that um, Art has recently been diagnosed um, with Parkinson's. And um, Art, for, I should back up, for those of you who don't know, Art served as pastor here, um, mid-80s. Or so roughly yeah okay um, and um, and then was association minister for the UCC for um, for a while as well um, and they will be moving to a facility I believe in Waukesha um, that uh, that will be able to help care for their needs but um, Kathy and Art both wanted me to share that with all of you as they they um, continue to have wonderful memories and continue to be excited um, about all the different ministries that, that happen um, here, and so hold them in their prayers. Other prayers today that we wish to particularly name? Yes, Lucy. I would like to pray for all of our mothers. Yes. Yes. Foster mothers. Um, I've told the story before. My grandmother was a, um, my grandmother and grandfather raised 110 children. Um, and you can guess that that wasn't all natural. <laughs> um, but through, the, through that gift of fostering, um, we're able to, to, to be such an incredible gift. So yes, um, foster mothers, both formal and informal, um, are, are beautiful. Any other prayers we particularly wish to name today? And friends, let us come to the Lord in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. 
we give thanks to the Lord for it is right to do so. Holy and gracious God, you who spoke and everything came into order, you who spoke and even we came into being, you have been patient with us, you have called us back to your side when we have wandered off, even when you have become perturbed, you did not cut us off. Your love ruled the day. And even now, even now when we prefer to live in cocoons and chrysalises, even when we build them ourselves, you do not give up on us. You stand before us. You help us break out of them. You call us forward into new life. So come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, you have heard the prayers that we ask, prayers for successful surgery, prayers for hope and understanding in the midst of diagnoses. We thank you for the gift of mothers and the gift of mothering. We thank you for those individuals who have fulfilled the role of caring and nurturing us both back then and even still today. We thank you, Lord, for all those who emulate the best of your mothering. Let them know how special they are. And let us use words and deeds to share that. Lord, we pray for the world. Bring your healing, bring your peace, bring your hope. Where there is hatred, replace it with love. Where there are grudges, replace it with forgiveness. Where there are only cocoons, bring life. We thank you, Lord, for the generosity of this community that allows us to dream dreams, and to build warming shelters, and to be more than just caterpillars. And now, O oh Lord, let us join our voices together as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, in just a moment we will say those sacred words known as the words of institution, where we take and we break the bread and we pour the cup. In there are the words that also open up the tombs of our life, the chrysalises and the cocoons, so that we may feast and have new life. When Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room, he took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it, and he said, take, eat, all of you. This is the nectar of life to nourish you in your new life. In the same way, after the supper, our Lord took a cup. And again, he gave thanks to God. He then took and he poured into it. And he said, take and drink out of this single cup. We might know that we are one. This is the blood of the new covenant the covenant that I make with you this day, 
that your sins shall be forgiven, that eternal life will be yours, that you are not just a caterpillar, you are a butterfly. So come and soar with Therefore, siblings in Christ, whenever we eat of this loaf and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving grace until the fullness of Christ is known throughout all the world. We proclaim that we are butterflies, and though our lives may not be forever, we still have work to do. We proclaim that we are here with and for one another to help us spread wings and fly. This is the covenant, the new covenant, that Christ makes this day. Will the servers please join me? So, um, in just a moment, when the music begins, you are invited to come, to bring your offerings, to place them in the plate, to take bread, and to dip it in the cup and celebrate that your wings are upon you. So friends, come. All is ready. Let us feast together. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, these gifts will feed us so we can go and multiply the gospel in deed and use words when necessary. May you so powerfully live within us. May our wings be spread so wide 
that all this community will know that you live, that you are here. Be pleased with us as we go out and serve you. Amen. Those who are able, let us stand and sing our praise to God. Let us receive God's blessing today. With one hand out, we remind ourselves we receive blessings. With the other hand facing outward, we remind ourselves that we are givers of God's blessing in this world. And hear these words. May the face of God shine upon you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ overflow through you. And may the community of the Holy Spirit bind us together as one family, now and always. Let us go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go out singing. for Christ.